Um, there are two things that I think that great leaders need to have. Empathy and perspective. And I think these things are very often forgotten. Leaders are so often so concerned about their status or their position in an organization, they actually forget their real job. And the real job of a leader is not about being in charge, it's about taking care of those in our charge. Evolving. We're all evolving at different rates and along different paths during our journey through life. We all come from different backgrounds and are at different stages in our lives. Yet we share a commonality that is Austin and I. We spend 40 hours per week with one another actively engaged in our endeavor to help others improve and optimize their vision. Each of you has your own view and perspective of Austin and I, what we are, what we do, but allow me to share with you what I have seen of Austin and I, the past, present, and future. Our story is really a story of evolution, personally and professionally. It is my hope that your story and your evolution in life will be positively affected by ours. Where to begin? Let's start with July 1st, 1969, when Mitchell Wong opened the practice. Remember 1969? Richard Nixon was president and Austin had a population of 244,000. At that time, there were four ophthalmologists in Austin. 3B Medical Arts Square was the location where he started his first practice. Mitchell Wong was in solo practice for three years at this location, then moved to a building that he constructed at 1009 East 40th Street in 1972. My grandfather, Fred Wong, Mitchell's dad, was the general contractor. It has been said by my mother, Rose, that he has an emotional attachment to the office at 40th Street. I'm not sure exactly why, but perhaps because his dad helped construct it. I remember visiting 40th Street with my dad, seeing patients for emergencies on weekends just to keep him company in the 1970s. Interestingly, to teach me a good work ethic, he would have me clean the parking lot while he saw patients inside the building. From 1972 to 1993, my dad had a few associate ophthalmologists that worked at Austin Eye, but he was mainly a solo ophthalmologist for the first 24 years of his career. My mom, Rose, worked side by side with my dad initially part-time in 1972 until she became more full-time as me and my brothers grew older. My brother Sean became an ophthalmologist and worked at Austin and I with my dad from 1993 to 1997, then started his own practice, Eyes of Texas Laser Center, in 1997. I joined Austin and I in 1997 at the age of 29. So by the fall of 1997, Austin and I had our office at 1090 40th Street, had two ophthalmologists, me and my dad, and about 12 staff members. We had a billing system that was computerized, but our medical records were all paper. All correspondence was dictated into a recorder, then transcribed by typewriter, then mail. This is the best thing that's happened to typing since electricity. The IBM Selectric Typewriter. Instead of type bars, there's an ingenious printing element that dances across the paper at incredible speed. Faster even than the eye can see. I brought the first computer for word processing to Austin I in 1997, a Macintosh. We had a website, austin-i.com, and we had to change that one to get rid of the dash. All surgery was performed at St. David's Outpatient Surgery Center. Our LASIK was performed at St. David's as well. I took call for emergencies at, at Seton Northwest, Seton Main, Brackenridge Hospital, and St. David's Hospital. We were required to take emergency room call in order to maintain operating room privileges at these hospitals where we would perform most of our surgeries. In 2000, we opened our second location at 11901 Jollyville Road. This location initially had six exam rooms, a one operating room, ambulatory surgical center, and an optical. 
During the period between 1997 to 2000, a majority of the surgical volume was LASIK surgery. Acquired. Well, welcome to the year 2000, where this kind of technology is now being used in laser eye surgery. This new machine, the first of its kind in Austin, uses the same principles to lock on target. In this case, the target it is your eye. Myopia with astigmatism on his left eye. So the result is, if you have the jitters before surgery, it's not a problem. The tracker follows your eye. Each mark is precisely placed. More precise, more accurate, quicker recovery, better vision. Now it's a two-laser procedure. This is the step. This is a computer-guided laser being applied to the cornea to create a flap. It's called intralasic surgery, and it's new. Should be probably about the sixth patient that we've treated. We were doing between 1,500 to 2,000 LASIK procedures annually during this time. We advertised LASIK surgery on billboards, local magazines, the Austin Statesman, and online. And because of the booming economy, the LASIK volume was robust. For patients that were interested in LASIK, we actually had a policy where the surgeon, either my dad or I, would personally speak with the interested patient who called our office in order to make a favorable impression on the caller who would then hopefully schedule an evaluation after their initial inbound phone call to our practice. By 2000, we had a better computer system for billing and scheduling, CompuLink, but our medical records were still on paper written by hand. The physician would perform all ancillary testing, corneal topography, biometry to calculate a lens implant, the refraction, the patient education, and consent. The technician would check the vision, read the glasses, and obtain a history only. The rest was done by the ophthalmologist. We started doing intraocular surgery, most of which was cataract surgery in our ambulatory surgical center in 2000. Our ASC allowed us to withdraw from ER call at all hospitals as we no longer had to perform surgery at the other local hospitals, but would instead perform all our surgery in our ASC. In 2004, our focus on cataract surgery grew when the initial FDA-approved presbyopia correcting lens, the crystal lens, became commercially available. This is Pat Summerall with Dr. Mitchell Wong and Dr. Shannon Wong for the crystal lens. You know, not even an NFL veteran can avoid the vision problems with growing older. First having to deal with reading glasses, and in time, even my distant vision got worse. And I feared my announcing days would soon be sidelined forever. Then in 2005, two more presbyopia correcting lenses, the Resume and Restore lenses, gained FDA approval and commercialization. In 2006, we transitioned to electronic medical records when we incorporated IDOC. From 2005 to 2009, we would hold monthly seminars at our Jollyville Road office to educate patients about all laser LASIK and lens implant surgery. We were riding the waves of technology and refractive surgery in our practice. The focus was on the technology and the practice did well overall. But between 1997 to 2006, I noticed that the philosophy of the practice had to evolve. I had to evolve and I needed help. Growing up as a child, I idolized my parents. They were always right. They were successful by every standard. Married, four children, all had advanced degrees, two of which were ophthalmologists. So in the first decade of my professional career as an ophthalmologist, I deferred to their wisdom and knowledge out of respect that had been earned over a lifetime. But I began to realize that the oversight of our staff and recruitment of new staff was inconsistent and needed help. I did not have the time to devote to managing our staff to the level that would be needed to improve the overall quality of our staff and to provide improved oversight. So I asked Betty to help Rose and the office with human resources. In 2006, Betty stepped up to help hire and manage along with Rose. Our youngest child was starting kindergarten at this time, which allowed her to help me and my mom select and hire better candidates than what we had in the past. Betty has a finance degree from UT Austin and a law degree from SMU Law School. 
but her intangibles are her ability to understand and communicate with people and her moral compass that helps her and us make wise choices. With Betty on board, we were able to hire staff that were more capable and who had a better work ethic that was aligned with the goals of the practice as a whole. In 2010, John Odette joined the practice and brought fresh ideas and perspectives to the practice. He encouraged me to have the staff do more of the diagnostic tests, corneal topography and OCT. His temperament blended well with me and my dad and our office staff. Above all, he was highly motivated and talented and wanted to grow his practice, which in turn motivated me to improve the practice as much as possible. In 2012, we acquired the first femtosecond laser for cataract surgery in Austin. This acquisition and the marketing campaign behind it forced us to change our practice in ways that we never before imagined. In order to make the laser economically sustainable, we had to market it. From 1997 and 2012, our marketing efforts were largely created from our own ideas and efforts. They were homegrown. Generations of Austin Eye families. We've treated a generation of Austin families for six decades. When it comes to caring, personal, state-of-the-art care for you and your vision, Austin Eye is here for you. If you've been considering vision correction surgery, such as the all-laser eye LASIK, or surgery to help aging eyes see younger and clearer, the technology has never been better. But in order to make the transition to laser cataract surgery, I knew we needed professional help. So we retained the help of Mike Malley to help us create a TV campaign to promote laser cataract surgery. With Mike's talent, creativity, and help, we would enter the most productive phase in the history of Austin Eye over the next seven years. For Austin resident Robert Cushing, life has never been better thanks to laser cataract surgery at Austin Eye. It's opened up a whole new world. It's not just that you see better, but you actually feel better. It's not a day goes by that I don't really think about uh, how, how blessed I am to have 20-20 vision. This is a whole different world. It is wonderful. And thank you, Austin Eye. For laser cataract surgery in Austin, call Austin Eye at 512-250-2020. In order to handle the increased volume of patients that would come to us for cataract surgery, we hired Dr. Marie Bowie, our fourth ophthalmologist, and Whitney Kanzler, our first optometrist, and more nurses, technicians, and administrative staff to support the increased patient demand that we had created through our marketing efforts, which worked superbly. Now back to our theme of evolving. As we have evolved, our priorities and perspectives have changed. Before 2012, the priorities that drove Austin and I were in order. Number one, the patient. Number two, the doctor. Number three, the technology. And last, the staff. In other words, the patient came first. The staff was there to take care of the patient and the doctors. This system worked well, but was marked by high staff turnover, which was bad for office morale and physician stress, mainly my own. After 2012, we came to the realization that in order to improve, we had to seek the advice of other ophthalmology practices that were outperforming ours. I'm reminded of a scene from the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, when the main character, Chris Gardner, played by Will Smith, is struggling as a single father to make ends meet when he sees a businessman who is parking his Ferrari, seeking to understand how the businessman could afford a Ferrari and have what he perceived as a successful career. He asks two simple questions. Man, I got two questions for you. What do you do and how do you do it? <laughs> I'm a stockbroker. Stockbroker? Oh, good. Had to go to college to be a stockbroker, huh? You don't have to. Had to be good with numbers and good with people. That's it. Hey, you take care. Hey, I'm gonna let you hang on to my car for the weekend, but I need it back for Monday. Feed the meter. <laughs> I still remember that moment. They all looked so damn happy to me.
Why couldn't I look like that? The teachable moment was in order to improve, we had to understand how other ophthalmology practices were able to outperform ours. How were other businesses able to create a better model? Over the past decade, we've evolved in our priorities at Austin Eye. This evolution has been slow, but deliberate. By reaching out and visiting other ophthalmology practices, Dr. Who's practice in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the Eye Guys in Augusta, Georgia, Key Whitman in Dallas, Sam Maskett's practice in Beverly Hills, and Vance Thompson Vision in South Dakota, and listening to other visionary leaders, such as Simon Sinek, Bill McRaven, Ray Dalio, Bob Iger, and Steve Jobs, we have come to realize that to fully realize the success that Austin and I can become, we need to reorient our priorities. The priorities now are, number one, the staff, number two, the patient, number three, the doctor, and number four, the technology. Where we used to prioritize technology and the experience of the surgeons, we realize that if we can empower and educate our staff and give them a great environment to work in that is supportive, caring, and which compensates them well, then the staff will be fulfilled by the work that they do and the relationships that they have with their work family. If the staff is fulfilled by the work that they do, then they will take great care of our patients who will have a great experience at Austin Eye. And then the doctors will be able to more efficiently and effectively perform their job. The staff is the most valuable asset at Austin Eye. Our goal is to do meaningful work that helps humanity, helps our community improve their vision using the best technology that is offered by the best eye care team of ophthalmologists, optometrists, administrative staff, technicians, and nurses. What you do at Austin Eye on a daily basis is important in helping to improve the vision of those in our community. It has been said that if one person can change a room, then that room can change a community, and a community can change the world. Our goal is to create a great work culture that we can all learn and grow from on a daily basis. From that work culture, we will be motivated to provide outstanding care and customer service for our patients and our customers who will have a great experience with our practice. Our evolution has allowed us to improve Austin Eye by every measurable metric over the past decade. Staff compensation, staff benefits, staff appreciation, continuing education, annual practice revenue, cataract surgery volume, premium cataract surgery volume. And as we grow, we want to continually improve the culture of Austin Eye. You all have options as to where you work and what you do. Our goal is to incentivize you to grow and stay at Austin Eye as long as you feel that you're being taken care of by us and that you're doing work that is fulfilling and meaningful. We want to always be introspective and objective about what we do and how we operate and grow Austin Eye. Success is not a destination, it is a journey and we will continue to make adjustments as needed to make Austin Eye a place that you're incentivized to stay at and grow at as we continue to grow. So what does the future hold? Where will we be in five years? Most likely, we'll be doing more cataract and premium lens implant surgery, and we will definitely need more staff to make that possible. In the year 2020, we will move one of our offices at 40th Street to our new location in Westlake. We want our Westlake office to be a showpiece, an example of what is possible if you practice medicine and operate a business the way we do. We want our entire office to be an example that others will see and have their eyes and minds open to what is possible. Patients should have the best experience and outcomes. Doctors, industry, medical students, and ophthalmologists in training should see and feel how we are embodying excellence. We want our staff to reflect excellence. We want our physical facilities to be first rate. The ASC will move from our Northwest location to Westlake. There will be more space and three operating rooms. The themes that we have instructed the architects to incorporate into the new building are high-tech, modern, and contemporary. Over the next five years, the Austin Eye that I envision 
is two locations, two to three optometrists, increased surgical volume with premium lens adoption in particular. And Austin Eye will be a model practice that others will strive to emulate. Our staff will certainly grow. As we grow, we will continue to evolve and improve in all aspects of our business and our culture. There's a saying, you're only limited by your imagination and your willingness to make your imagination a reality. You only live once. We will do our very best to make your experience with our family at Austin Eye meaningful, fulfilling, and impactful. Thank you very much.